I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14. Let's focus on verses 24 through 27. But if the distance is too great for you to carry your tithe offering, since the place where the Lord chooses to put His name is too far away from you, and since the Lord your God has blessed you, then exchange it for money. Take the money in your hand and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses And you may spend the money on anything you want, cattle, sheep, wine, beer, or anything you desire, and you are to feast there in the presence of the Lord your God, and rejoice with your family. Do not forget the Levite within your gates, since he has no portion or inheritance among you. Now you may recall the instance where Jesus drove the buyers and the sellers from the temple complex. Clearing out the temple is a stark contrast to the weak, frail Jesus that the world likes to put out there. And yes, God is love, and Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, but the Lord is also known to be jealous and zealous for His people, Israel, and His bride, the church. So why was there a temple marketplace in the days of Jesus? Well, some people lived too far from the temple to carry their tithe offerings to the Lord. The Lord allowed them to sell their offerings in their hometowns and to carry the money to the temple. And once in Jerusalem, they would repurchase their offerings and present them to the Lord. Now, while the presence of a marketplace was itself not a sin, it was actually a command of the Lord, the practices of the marketplace during Jesus' day were a sin. See, at the temple in Jesus' day, things had gotten way out of hand. The Levites were profiting from unfair money exchange rates and price gouging. And they were like the gas stations next to the highway, whose prices are higher than the gas stations just a few blocks down the road. And they were profiting from the worshippers' ignorance and their desperation to worship. But what about the average Israelite's involvement in this dilemma? Was the price gouging solely the fault of the temple sellers? There's an interesting caveat to God's message, do not forget the Levite. The Levite, those were the ones who were sustained by the people's offerings. Today's passage suggests a strong potential for the Levites to get left out. And could it be that the community of Israel's lack of devotion in giving tithes and offerings led to the Levites' compulsion to price gouge? And this message is close to home for me because Groundworks Ministries exists purely on the generosity of people like you. Yet only 5% of the people who participate in our ministry end up supporting us financially. Consider Jesus' statement when He was clearing the temple. He says, My house is to be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now I believe you refers both to Israel and to the Levites. Israel had robbed Levi of tithes, and Levi, that is the priesthood, robbed Israel in the exchange rate. Consider the words of the prophet Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? And yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. So let's ask the Lord to reveal what we might be holding back from Him and the community of believers. And perhaps revival begins with the change of our hearts and our actions. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.